Microphone check and screen share check, please. All right, good evening, guys. Kenneth Torres Capital, Nightly Strategy Podcast for October 3rd, 2022. Uh, we went a little bit late on our uh, Creativity 202 uh, dialogue session. Uh, we do two 90-minute sessions a week for the uh, folks taking Creativity 202. We're about halfway through that course. It's phenomenal. I had a discussion with it with the uh, head of Denmark's FBI this morning for about two hours, and uh, he's taking a look at how we do that and uh, figuring out how we can bring that to Denmark to train his folks in the way that we are training traders. It was a kind of a humbling, eye-opening moment when a guy of that caliber is taking you seriously. Um, makes you want to do your best work. Um, of course, you guys make me want to do my best work, too, so that's nothing new. All right, let's take a look at um, the uh, market health check. We'll start with the 30-day look back first. I want to get that in context for our swing traders. So, uh, So here's today. And here is our 30-day look back. Here's the 20-day look back to here. The 10-day look back. Uh, that's this one. Here's the five-day. And then here's today. And you can see price closed at 366. So we are still was at 23 and a half percent off the swing high. So I mean we're we're in bear conditions by any measure. We have uh, leg one pause, leg two, and now it looks like we're trying to get a pause in here on the on this five day. Because uh, when you look at it, we had a uh, a slight gap up, brief sell-off, strong close, and upward move. So this was a large up day. The one-day range is large because it's almost, you know, when you look at the, here's the five-day high, and here's the five-day low, and so that makes this the five-day range. And the one-day range encompasses most of the five-day range. So today, on a relative basis, was a large range kind of day. On the other hand, you can see that the size of the five-day range is less than half of the 10-day range. So most of that 10-day sell-off here, now we've got a bit of like a five-day consolidation going on here. We have not broken to a new low. We've not been able to break to a new high, so we're starting to get this sideways chop, which makes you want to believe that, hey, this, this could actually be a support level. And then we notice that the RL10 today uh, bottomed and reversed up, and it crossed the baby dragon. So that puts like a punctuation mark on the end of this run, which started here when the RL10 rolled over, crossed the baby dragon. So you have that whole move terminating today. So those are the two endpoints of that leg, just as these were the two endpoints of that leg. And when you compare that to the size of the up move, you know. You say from here, oops, yeah, from here to here, the size of the up move compared to the down move, that's, it's not a surprise that we are in, you know, bear. On the other hand, there's going to be a lot of folks that take a look at this one day move and say, oh, wow, look at those percentages that we're about to go take a look at. Uh, surely that's the bottom. Yeah, that's what we said here, and that's what was said here, and that's what was said here, 
and really in that whole leg. That's what was said here. And so bear markets have a way of toying with you the way a cat toys with a mouse and all your feelings and when you want to go all in. So uh, recognize your feelings, feel them, put them where they belong in a notebook, and then make a professional decision about what you see. And what we see is the peace are continuing to go down. Uh, we see the dragon, you know, here's the southern skin of the dragon, the spine of the dragon, the upper skin of the dragon. You know, that's the whole dragon acting as a buffer right there. And it has prevented, you know, it's been like a little firewall. It has not let price break through at all. The, the dragon acts as that noise buffer. The PSAR acts as the signal for a genuine reversal. But it all does start with bottoming of the RL10, crossing of the baby dragon. Now it has to get through this no man's land before this genuinely becomes an RLXD. At the same time, we know enough to be able to say that the bottom of the RL10, which is at about, uh, call that 358, that's the demarcation line for a collapsing dragon. So any price below that is instantly short because that's what the start of a third leg would look like in the same way that when we come over here to the previous belly of the dragon and come across, that those breaks triggered that move. That's not even controversial. In the same way that this RL10 flip triggered that move. So bare normal conditions, that's where we're at. It's a compound critical state. Now on the upside, what we would, we would also say, um, you have a swing low here, and then today opened, sold off, and then closed here, and it closed with a higher low. So when the second bar closes, we can now say this is tentatively bar one until this bar closes. When this bar closes with a higher low and it took out the previous bar's high, that makes this a one, two, and now what we want to see is what happens to tomorrow. What we're going to have today's low as a demarcation line. And then what we want to see is we want to see price open somewhere inside of today's range and then take out today's high. If it does, <coughs> while that day is open, uh, if tomorrow it takes out yesterday's high and has not yet made a new low, then that becomes day three, and then we have a one, two, three entry. So an orderly entry tomorrow would be to open inside of today's range and then make a new high without first making a new low. If it makes a new low, then all bets are off. That's not a one, two, three pattern. That's something else. It might be tradable intraday. But in terms of a swing trade, what you've got to see is two higher lows and then a higher high without making a new low. That makes this a one, two, three, which also happens to be like right at the edge of the dragon. So if it opens inside the yellow zone and crosses through 370, I'm long on a one, two, three entry with a stop at the belly of the RL10. And then this would be my wrist box right in here. That would be my standard wrist box on a swing trade. So I'm ready to be long at 370 and off we go. Now if it gets through the PSAR dot, then that's actually an additional confirmation. And then it's a tactical trade until we can get to the 
next test, which is the top of the 10-day range around 390. So what we're looking at here is potentially a move from 370 to 390. That's plus 20 bucks. So if you could manage about a $7 risk, that would give you a 3 to 1. If you had a $10 risk, that would give you a 2 to 1, and that's justifiable. And then if it breaks out of the 10-day high, then you can begin to think about a second position. Then you come over here to the peak of the uh, RL10 here at around 403, and that's where you could add a third position. And that's climbing the trail of tears all the way back up to the peak over here at about 430. So that's the, that's the price ladder to the upside, climbing the, you know, going up the stairs, the trail of tears, and at the same time, respecting the fact that if it breaks below 358, we're so short to the downs that you can't, you don't get in the way of that thing because we will blow right past you on our way to get eagerly short. So that's the situation there on the swing trade. Uh, I want to drop down and t take a look briefly at the 30-minute chart uh, because I think this is this is instructive. So there will be a lot of naive enthusiasm uh, on this. And the thing about naive enthusiasm is, you know, sometimes it's right. So here was today's range. And this was a powerful move to the upside. Well, that's a powerful move to the upside, like this one was a powerful move to the downside, like this one was a powerful move to the upside, just like this one last Friday was a powerful move to the downside, just like this one was a powerful move to the upside. So do you see what I'm saying? We've not been able to string two days in a row uh, lately. And the sell-offs have been larger than the upward moves. And so that's why you get a net downward uh, trend line. So if it breaks below this last 30-minute bar here, that's a 30-minute box. If it breaks below here, you're justified in being short intraday and then getting short on a swing if it breaks below 358. That's absolutely standard work for this kind of market. By the same token, we're mindful that the peak of the RL10 here, 370, uh, that wouldn't surprise us to see that work. That would be a vote up. That would take a second day in a row of upward price action. And we haven't seen that lately. If we were to see that tomorrow, that would be the first sign that this was more than just a one-day response to uh, traders trying to take advantage of extreme downward pressure. So bear that in mind. I'm not saying that that won't happen. It absolutely could happen. That wouldn't be surprising. But also, a move to the downside wouldn't be surprising. The first new information is if it breaks below 358 or if it breaks above 370. Then it becomes interesting. Meanwhile, this is all just sideways chop and tactical trading intraday. Check or hold. Let me know in chat if that was helpful. On a longer term basis, now that we look back 150, you know, we're looking back now 150, and these are 30-day chunks. Now we're going to look at this 30-day chunk in context. So here's a 10-day, 10-day, and here's the most recent 10-day. That's why this has been so brutal. Now, sure, the last five days have been sideways, choppy, and sideways. Both, sideways, choppy, and sideways. Um, but again, it's got to get above 370 to be interesting, and anything below 358 is crush it to the downside. So that's what this feels like. This Notice the symmetry. Notice that, um, 
you know, you get the two big legs down. So a third leg down would not be surprising. But this is an important critical state right here. So far it's holding, but it wouldn't take much for this to collapse. We just barely edged out of oversold. All right, so let's take a look at the performances now. Uh, of the sectors and our tactical um, tactical symbols here. Uh, so the indices all behaved almost in lockstep today. So you have the S&P, very strong, 2.64%, right? Awesome. The Russell was the best performer at 2.65, so basically the same move. Diamonds were right there with them at 2.61. So, the <coughs> excuse me, and the Qs, 2.35. So all the U.S. indexes are within 0.3 of each other and all between 2.65 and 2.35. So what that tells you is that somebody was buying great big baskets of large caps in all the indexes with significant volume and not distinguishing between individual companies so much. Most of this was index buying. And so it all performed around 2.6. Now, emerging markets had a good day, but they lagged by a full percentage at 1.63. And treasuries had a little relief rally at 1.35. So they're still above 100. And then the most important stock in the world, uh, Tesla, just got absolutely slaughtered today with Musk in the news. Uh, with a minus 8.61. So that is powerful Tesla selling right there. And it's not even explainable by the the sell-off in Rivian. I think part of that, about three of the 8% in Tesla is probably the recognition that electronic vehicles got to live in the real world and that natural disasters that shut down the grid place everybody that's counting on electric vehicles to get them out of danger. You might want to think twice about that. You might want to think twice about the wisdom of California saying in 2035 all new cars are going to be electric when their grid can't handle the few electric cars that they do have. You want to add 10 million electric cars to the grid? Are you prepared to make $100 billion of investment in the energy grid? Well, we better do it sooner rather than later if you think electric is the way to go. That should shape your view of some macroeconomic investing in the next decade. All right, let's look at the underperformers. So the S&P was up 2.35. You had lumber, 2.36. Mexico, blended commodities, real estate, staples. Still a respectable 1.7 and 2.6, 2.26. Simon Property Group, commercial real estate, 1.4. Australian dollar pair, the, the fangs, 1.3. Lithium, Arc Genomics, Biotech, Bitcoin, Arc Innovation, Agriculture, 0.2. Consumer Discretionary, 0.1. Part of that is that Tesla is part of uh, XLY, and so that acts as a drag on XLY. It's the single biggest component in that ETF, by the way. So lithium to agriculture ranging from 1.3 to 0.1. Only Ethereum, Rivian, Tesla, and Robinhood couldn't make money today. And then Tesla and Rivian both got smashed. PayPal, 1.29 on individual companies. Squarespace, 1.4. Coinbase, 2.26. So there you have three of the financial disruptors 
all lagging the broader markets. Oh, I should add Robinhood into that as flat. So that's all your financial disruptors were not holding up well. Well, it's not only that, Gary, but it's also every, everybody's pretty sure Elon is. Uh, there's a lot of folks who think he's uh, P.T. Barnum, and, and he's talking about his uh, little robot suit instead of worrying about basic production on his primary line of business. So there are so many other things that have diverted or diluted his attention. People are saying, um, are they really going to be? A, I'm still waiting on my Cybertruck. And I, I gave up on their. Uh, Starlink. Um, they're just not, they just don't deliver to their initial rosy projections. And so you're not wrong in thinking that a lot of their news releases are hype just to keep the momentum going. I don't know. Uh, we'll see. So SPY 2.64. Uh, sectors. So clean energy 2.68. Finance 2.7. S&P tech 3.1. Now compare that to the NASDAQ 100 tech. So a significant advantage to the S&P mature tech compared to the NASDAQ's more speculative tech, if I can say it that way. Uh, wood was up 3.12. Big difference between that and cut. Those are the two wood or lumber ETFs we track. Materials, three and a quarter, pretty healthy. Wheat and precious metals, uranium, oil, and marijuana between four and a quarter and four uh, percent. Energy and oil exploration got a healthy bounce today, 5.6 and 6.4. Brazil, 9.85. Individual companies that did well, Devon Energy, Cliff, U.S. Steel. There's your steel makers. Uh, I. I need to scroll down a little bit so we can see the really good ones. Oh, yeah, Alcoa. So so here were the metals which had been murdered last week. Critical state. Alcoa for 11. Cliff Natural Resources and Steel, U.S. Steel, 8.5 and 7. Uh, here's Devon Energy, our buddy in the energy sector, 8.65. So... When energy does well, it's not unusual to see Devon do much better. Uh, so you got, um, here's Semiconductors Intel, Texas Instruments, and NVIDIA. Uh, those are your semis, our little semi group here. And those are better than, uh, than the tech ETFs and better than the broad market. So semiconductors and metals uh, and the energy of uh, XOP and Devon Energy all looking pretty good for tomorrow. As a, If there's going to be a follow-through tomorrow, you wouldn't be surprised if those continued to do well. I also got to say that um, if you ever wanted to buy Tesla and you saw, oh, well, they were off 8.5%, was that just the froth getting blown off and this is an opportunity to buy them on sale? Uh, you could imagine how people would think that's the case. You know? <clears throat> Alright, let's take a look at some sniper trading. And as easy as the sniper trades to the downside were on Friday, they were like that to the upside uh, today. Oops. Uh, so here's Tesla, and I was working that one on a one minute. And so here's the opening range one. Here's the big gap down. And so that was different than all of the other sectors. And so that said, well, let's be ready for this one. So if that breaks, probably want to be short so let's see what the uh, opening range three looks like yeah I was ready by the third minute to 
to get my after the after the opening range two bro I was ready just let's go standard risk two bucks by this point you've got to have you've got to have your stop from here brought down at least to about here so that you can lock in you got to be able to lock in that much that's a one hour lock in go to the top of that one maybe that's a two hour lock in Now you gotta to me you gotta be ready to say something like that now. Now I've got a one, two, three R lock in if I just put my stop there. And that's where I got hit. PSAR flip anybody now I'm looking at this was now we're mindful this is one minute so this is only that's about eight minutes but it hasn't made a new low so that looks like a this would be the collapsing dragon to the downside checker hold so this is a standard supported spring crossing PSAR flip there's my standard wrist box two bucks if it gets a, it has to get above you know the uh, the gap down it has to get above here to be really interesting because then it would try to close the gap so this is simply the tactical trade space in here tactical meaning that all I'm trying to do here is uh, if I'm when I get long here with a wrist box here I'm just hoping this thing goes up far enough that I can get my stop up into here uh, in order to lock in lock in some gains all right that's all I'm trying to do in the tactical trade space checker hold And it doesn't follow through. And the RL10 crosses the baby dragon quick. So I don't believe in that thing at all. So I'm happy to just take home plus three and a scratch on Tesla. On a day where it, learned, it lost eight and a half. Okay. All right, here's Cliff. I'm um, back on the normal three minutes. So here's our gap. That first three minutes had a nice run up and then closed here. So I just marked that off as the, the peak of the OR3 and the bottom of the OR3. And then it breaks out. So I want to get long. There's my standard wrist box. There's an R10 wiggle. I might be interested in the second position above that if it could get there. Uh, by this moment, about uh, 15 or 20 minutes into the trade, I should now be up into here. Whoops, that should be red, sorry. By this time, I could probably be about there and lock in. Now, 
no lose plus dinner for two. Standard exit. This was weak enough in here that I wasn't really interested in getting that second position. Just I was just content with letting this thing trickle on up into here. So there's one unit of risk. One, two, so that's about plus two. Check or hold. The whole market was enraged to the upside, so I'm really only interested in and steels. All of the steels and metals were doing well, so I was not interested in that downside trade at all. And then when this bottoms out here and the PSAR flips, standard risk box, check or hold. And a standard exit. For plus one. So now we're at about plus three. And pretty much grinding the rest of the day. Last one. Uh, Alcoa, which was a good trader for us last week. Three-minute chart, nice gap up. Here's the OR3. There's the breakout to the upside. Long here, standard risk. This thing just rockets straight up, so you could get up to about here pretty quickly. And then just uh, uh, lock in. My brother probably put a second position on there with his mechanical 2R battle drill. There were a couple opportunities. And Alcoa looked better than Cliff. So this was legit. That R10 wiggle and that one, those are both places where a second position might have been added. Uh, but now I'm feeling how this is coming into the station as it slows down and everything curls into a halt. You can just kind of just feel that coming into the station, can't you? And on this one, you're holding one, one, two, three. That's probably about four R in hand. So with that kind of a move, you're, you know, you're, you got to be thinking my stop's got to be like right about there. And then if it does break out further, I might consider another position. Caught a two re-entry. Pick up another one R. Standard standard work. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, so uh, Nolan uh, is working just the CD, but uh, there's an important Go. 
an important distinction we want to make on his uh, his trading here. So uh, this entry here, these are the things that you're counting as CD entries. All right, so this one is not a CD. Uh, the collapsing dragon requires something like this, where you have price moves to the upside, and then the RL10 and dragon roll over. They come down, then they make a lower high. When you see that, that lower high, then you find the bottom, you draw that across. This is where the CD occurs, right here. All right. So if I'm looking at this entry over here, your CD is either the base of the RL10 or the base of the dragon. So your CD, if anything, should be this and not up in here. Now that's a good, so what you're actually doing is uh, you're hitting the RLXD and that's not a collapsing dragon. That's a different entry, but it's not the collapsing. And by the same token, when this thing reverses back to the upside, your CD is here. And so this this was an RLXD, but it's not a CD. This is a very aggressive entry on the short side. But I wouldn't be doing that on a day when the entire market had a huge gap up and you've got Kata 2 entries. Now that, that exit, these two exits are you're covering shorts where there's rising. Those are actually Kata 2 entries. So you should be long here, and 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 long here to take advantage of the Kata 2 in a rising market intraday. So those two do not qualify as CDs. This one, however, does because you have the belly of the RL10 over here, and now that, cro that can be short. And then when it doesn't work, you get a scratch, and that's correct. And then you take this RL10 and bring it over. This is a collapsing dragon. That is correct, and there was a scratch. So there was just no follow-throughs. So today, rather than 1.8, should have been two scratches. Now, when you start working the Kata 2, Kata 2 is what you get when you don't get a collapsing dragon, but instead you keep getting these uh, rising lows. You get this a swing low, higher low, higher low, higher low, higher low. That's characteristic of Kata 2 entries. All right, here's Agnieszka in the, what is this, five-minute Aussie. And she has a Z3 pinch and then a breakout. So she plays that, comes down and plays the crossing of the dragon uh, for point eight. She takes the, this is almost... A CD that's close. I'll give you an entry for a CD on that one. Uh, I think the exit should have been here instead of here. Um, let's see, scratch. Okay, then she goes long here. Okay, so that looks like a stop and reverse. Long here, scratch exit here. Long here, scratch exit here, short here, scratch exit there. This is uh, basically a Kata 2, correct? Uh, scratch, I, I like the scratch and I love the re-entry for 1.2 and another piece there. So she gets 1.2 on the 5-minute Aussie. Uh, that's pretty good shooting. She got what was available on the three moves that paid off, so that's good work. Um, her one minute DAX, uh, she, let's see here, got chopped around a little bit here, but keeps firing. 
and then gets paid on the ones that are there and that's 0.9 so that's about a 2.4 for the day nice work first try on the five minute charts on the five minute Aussie that's that's in the deck so that's pretty good work uh, that's Nolan's checklist so your your understanding of the entry rules for the CD is not quite correct so we need to clean that up uh, this is uh, less on the um, on the Kiwi So uh, PSAR flip with rising lows, that's uh, that's like a Kata 2 entry. <coughs> His fill was a little bad. I like the quick scratch or quick micro loss. I like the PSAR flip to the downside. He, gets basi he basically covers that one. I, I, think, uh, he, I think he's staying out of the chop here, although that one would have paid off. I, I don't, I'm not offended by that. Um, now this one comes up in a higher low. So now it's starting to leave the Z3 pinch behind. And you notice that the RL270 is starting to slope up. So he gets the Kata 2 entry and pays off. There was a re-entry? Absolutely yes, because it didn't even get through the Dragon. And the PSR is still solid. So that's a failure to fail. And that's a re-entry right there. And you pick up another another R in there, I think. This is a nice tactical capture. So almost two R for the day, that's nice work. Uh, my brother on uh, Alcoa, this is on, uh, what is this, five minute. So there's the PSR flip. Wrist box off the bottom entry. There's his 2R battle drill automatic. So he's got plus 1, plus 2. He automatically enters the 2R battle drill. He enters this one, 2R battle drill, and then uh, comes out of that with 5.5. Uh, R10 wiggle gets long again. Uh, quick scratch. Uh, breakout long. To our battle drill, then I think, and then this is one. Oh, I'm sorry, that's an exit. So this is 1.8, and then a quick, quick scratch in there. So 6.5 for the day. So his two our battle drill certainly paid off during the, the explosion off of the bottom. So that's pretty good work. Nice work from the team today. Let's run up to um, dashboard one. Uh, so we are in, still in bearish normal. Uh, today's little two uh, pop gives us a nice overbought on the two day. Don't get carried away. Uh, risk off still it's still abnormally critical. Uh, the volatility is still supporting strong moves in either direction. It's just toying with us right now. We saw how that's been day on day off. Uh, for uh, the last six days. On the min pains, we have those pharmaceuticals still doing good, Exxon, Mobil, and Pfizer. But now we get, uh, I'm sorry, Merck and Pfizer, uh, but now Exxon, Mobil, and the energy's coming on board. Tesla got smashed and is going to be certainly in play the rest of this week. There's still more upside room to Alcoa because the sell-off was so strong in the uh, metals. Um, I like 
Brazil here on the min pane for the ETF 100. That's really attractive. Nice trader right there. Uh, Dow Tactical Summary. Um, lots of auto framers. Today's range was so large there was no dojis whatsoever. Minor breakout here in Home Depot. Major breakdown in Tesla. Those are the things to take out of it. So the, and then the percentage winners today. Alcoa with 11%. Chevron with uh, almost 6%. Making all the others kind of eclipse into uh, normality there, if I can say it that way. ETF tactical. Only one doji today in treasuries. Uh, breakouts here in Brazil and gold. Brazil is the stealth play here. Look at all that outperformance over the last tactical time frames. And then silver with another breakout today. Large move. Metals and mining, oil exploration. Big percentage moves. Over 6.5% on both. 9% in silver. Wow. Uh, the auto framer, remember those were double digits uh, last week. And there were some nice one day moves. Uh, Tesla, McDonald's, and Coke. Real estate still attractive at three and a half to one. Alcoa, I like it, two and a half to one. There's the market itself, 2.3 to one. So lots to choose from in there. It's a buyer's market. The only squeeze in 3M. Looking at the uh, snipers now. Godzilla's have been paying off. Uh, CCL remains the raging Godzilla with two exceptional um, volatile moves in the five day and the one day. Uh, in the tactical symbol set, just qu three quiet Godzillas. I'm like an NVIDIA in the chip space. If it's the second day of follow-through for tech tomorrow, NVIDIA could be a nice pop. Uh, no fireworks or popcorns because the sell-off was so large. A uh, handful of fence sitters. The ones that are starting to move, ETN and RMD. I've added this one, the one day movers, the one DM. So these are the ones that had the statistically the largest one day move compared to their recent moves. Um, I like all of these in descending order. Now these three also have strong five day moves as well. I'm like an Intel. Uh, I'm mostly interested in the most volatiles that are a combination of five-day and one-day volatility. Nike is of interest. Apple. I'm looking for symbols that are also on our tactical set. United Airlines, Tesla. Um, auto framing stats for our tactical symbol set and the sniper stats for that tactical symbol set. You can still see we're being dominated in the winter. Uh, 
Um, these two just jump way out at me right away. Um, Brazil and Apple because of their combination volatility. And then I also like this Dai Diamonds and Intel. Uh, XLB's move should also help with um, that strong move in Alcoa. This will tell you where all the strength was today. And some surprising weakness in here in Tesla and in Johnson & Johnson. So this tells you you could swing a dead cat and hit something that was making money today. I like uh, the strength in Brazil a lot. And the over on the eat uh, company side, the strength in Devon. Huge move. Huge move. Exxon Mobil. Double huge move. 301. Well, you don't see that very often. That's how big the Chevron move was today. You know, if we're looking at nearest neighbors, the last time it had that kind of a move, it didn't follow through. It didn't follow through. This time, it followed through. This time, it did not follow through. So three out of the last, no, I'm sorry, four out of the last five times that you had a red candle followed by a strong white candle, four out of five times in this 30-day period, it, it did not follow through and collapse and broke hearts. At the same time, the slope is starting to improve. And the pain and suffering of all those lost gains is being felt. So maybe yeah, you can make an argument. This is, in retrospect, this could be the bottom. <laughs> and we know how dangerous that is. All right, that's everything I want to cover for today. Um, good work from the team. We'll get this published and posted. Uh, take good care. And we'll see you in the chat room.